We've been together for six years, married for four. I don't know what to do anymore. I feel like I'm living in the Truman Show. Everything I do is watched and judged. Just this evening, after we came back from the gym, we were in the kitchen. And then he left for his office without saying anything. I waited a few minutes to see if he was coming back, but he didn't. So I went down to my office. I turned on my heated blanket, it's still a bit chilly here, leaned my chair back, got cozy, and put on a YouTube video. 30 seconds after I hit play, he returns to the kitchen and doesn't see me. He starts shouting, hello? All the time it feels like he treats me like I'm meant to simply magically be there and available when he wants me to be, but gives no indication when he'll want it. If I'm not where he wants me to be, he starts shouting, hello? from another room in a tone that suggests I've done something insane for not reading his mind and being there. He wanted me to watch TV with him, but I didn't really want to. I try to put it out of my mind, but I know that if I do anything like watch a YouTube video or play a video game, then I'll hear about it later. He doesn't like the podcasts I watch and says they're radicalizing me. I watch things like the H3 podcast and Asmongold. If he catches me watching a video, He'll make judgmental comments. I almost open a video game, but then I remember that he stopped liking video games recently and will judge me for wasting my free time on those too. After a while of anxious thinking, I go to join him and watch TV. When I sit down, I realize I'm very tired. This annoyed him. He said, I don't want you here if you're going to be sleepy. If you're sleepy, just go to bed. I said, can't I just be sleepy in here? And he said, I don't want you to be like my father, just nodding off in front of the TV every night. I watch TV with him for an hour and then get up. I say, let's finish this movie tomorrow and retreat to my office. I played a video game for 20 minutes before he bursts in. He claims, I thought you were asleep. I said, I never said that. I just said, let's finish it tomorrow. He says, I'm upset with you for misleading me. And why are you playing that shoot anyway? and begins trying to distract me from it, asking questions about where things are in the house. I tried to get back into the game, but couldn't, and closed it a few minutes later. Today I woke up, worked, cooked him dinner, went to the gym, came back, spent more time with him, and I don't know, I just really feel like it would have been okay if I played a video game or watched a YouTube video for 30 minutes. But it's not. I'm sat here wondering how I got into this situation. This is literally every day of my life now though it didn't used to be like this. Is there any way out of this cycle? I really feel like I have no space to breathe or just be my own person. I've tried talking to him. I told him, I feel like a secondary character or an NPC in the story of you, but I wanna be in my own story too. He told me I sounded autistic. I've never been diagnosed with autism and no one else in my life has ever suggested it. I haven't even filed my taxes yet because every moment is spent working or doing something for him or with him. I feel lost and tired. Is this normal? Is this just what married life is like and I should suck it up? Or does it sound to anyone else like he's just trying to shove me into the mold of the person that he actually wants around? And it's not really me that he likes. I don't know what to think. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one, I've been there. I'm sorry to tell you, but your husband sounds like a narcissist. My ex could not be alone ever. He just needed an audience and would get extremely annoyed if I chose to engage in any hobby or really anything at all that didn't involve him or benefit him in some way. He wanted me to sit and watch movies with him. And he would often pause it at random times to talk my ear off about something to do with the movie. But God forbid I ever did that. It doesn't matter. I have a freaking master's degree and critical theory and love to dissect films and themes. He had zero interest in what I had to say ever. I was just a supporting character in his life show. I was only supposed to agree with him. I had to go to sleep when he did, and I had to wake up when he did. I did this for three years. I'm sorry, but it will not get better for you unless you take steps for yourself now. Comment two. All of these are controlling behaviors at the very least. You don't need to justify wanting to play a video game or do your own thing. Even if you are married, you are allowed and welcome to do stuff on your own. I suggest you read the book, Why Does He Do That? by Dr. Lundy Bancroft. Read the book and be honest about what's described there. Compare it with your husband's actions. 
I really feel like I have no space to breathe or just be my own person. This is not what someone in a healthy and loving marriage should feel like. This is not normal. Read that book and reconsider if you want to live like this the rest of your life. Now for the update. Thanks for sticking around. Things have only gotten more intense since my last post. So the other day, I finally decided to file my taxes. I was in the middle of sorting through receipts when he stormed in, fuming because I hadn't answered his texts. I didn't hear my phone. It was on silent. He grabbed my phone and saw I had notifications from a work colleague. He started accusing me of having an affair, which is ridiculous. I tried to explain they were just work messages, but he wouldn't listen. He threw my phone against the wall and it shattered. I was so shocked I couldn't even cry. I spent the next day getting my phone fixed and trying to avoid him. But when I got home, he was all apologies, saying he'd overreacted. He even bought me a new phone. I wanted to be mad, but he looked so sincere. I accepted his apology, even though a part of me felt like this was just another part of the cycle. Then my best friend called. She was getting married and wanted me to be her maid of honor. I was over the moon until I told him. He said we couldn't afford for me to go because we were saving for a house. But I knew that wasn't true. We had enough savings. I argued that this was important to me, but he said I was being selfish and thinking only of myself. I ended up telling my friend I couldn't make it. She was heartbroken, and I felt like the worst friend ever. A few days later, he came home with a brochure for a vacation. He said he'd booked us a trip to make up for everything. I was stunned. How could we afford this but not my friend's wedding? I asked him. And he said he wanted us to have time alone to work on our relationship. I was torn. I wanted to go to my friend's wedding, but I also wanted to fix things with him. The trip was a disaster. We fought the whole time. He was mad that I was still upset about missing the wedding. I was mad that he didn't seem to care about my feelings. On the last day, he left the hotel and didn't come back until the next morning. He wouldn't tell me where he'd been. I was so worried and angry, but he just brushed it off like it was nothing. When we got back, things went from bad to worse. I found out he'd taken money out of our savings for the trip, money that was supposed to be for the house. I confronted him and he said it was his money too, and he could do what he wanted with it. I felt so betrayed. That money was for our future, and he'd spend it without even talking to me. Now I'm sitting here trying to figure out what to do. I feel like I'm losing myself in this marriage. I keep hoping things will get better, but they just seem to get worse. I don't know if I can keep living like this, but I'm also scared of what will happen if I leave. Thanks for reading. My best friend excludes me from his wedding. But when his bride runs off with the groomsmen, I become the go-to for gossip and give him the address to find her and watch his world crumble. I, 28-year-old male, wasn't invited to my good friend's 28-year-old male wedding. We've known each other since we were four years old. Both being athletes, we played about six different sports together growing up. Living in a rural town, this meant a lot of traveling together on weekends and hanging out before after training throughout the weeks. After graduating high school, I moved to a different state about 10 hours away. We reconnected in about 2017, and he taught me how to play some different computer games online. Since then, we have played thousands of hours together, shared memes and Snapchats almost every day, and met up in person to play some golf whenever we are in the same area. We have a group of about 12 of us that play games and talk almost every day and have gone on fun golf ski trips together over the years. The only two other people from our friend group that didn't get invited to the wedding live across the country and have never met the groom in person. We still all talk every day, but lately 90% of the conversation has been about the wedding, how fun it will be, how expensive it is, who will be there. One of the groomsmen had asked me about accommodations privately and if we'd like to share a room, to which I replied that I hadn't been invited. He was pretty surprised and thought I was joking at first. He thought it was odd that I wasn't invited and explained that even most of the snobby, spoiled rich kids that we disliked on our sports teams growing up had been invited. I don't really know how to feel. The bride and I have always had a good time filled with lots of laughs whenever we had interacted. Money is not an issue with them and the groom hasn't even acknowledged my non-invite. 
but still talks, plays games with me every day and tags me in memes all the time. I don't really know how to feel. I guess I misunderstood what our friendship was. I'm thinking about cutting off contact with the group as a whole. Update. Spoke to my friend. Here's the convo. Hey man, friend two asked me to share a room with him at your wedding. I told him I hadn't received an invitation in the mail yet. So I was just checking with you to confirm whether or not I was invited. Long pause. No, we have you at number 27 on the wait list. So if 27 people don't RSVP by July 4th weekend, we will send you an invite. No problem. Take care. You too. I feel like asking why I wasn't invited would do more harm than good. I'm pretty sad right now. I don't even know who to talk to about it because a grown man being upset about not getting a wedding invitation seems pretty pitiful. I was told by the best man that there's no wait list, money is no object, and the venue is nowhere near capacity. I don't really know what to say. It's all my entire friend group has been talking about for months. I've had a tough couple months with my dad dying recently, and I guess I just wanted a weekend to forget about it all and celebrate with some friends. Now for a few comments before the update, comment one. I read this after your update. This seriously sucks. I've been there just a couple of years ago. People have their reasons, but aren't always eager to share. I'm really sorry about your dad passing. I know how hard that is. My dad and I were super close. 16 years later, I still miss him. Events such as these really help us understand that not everyone we think is a friend is actually our friend. Some people use us. Some people put up with us. Some people are truly good people. It sounds like the guy who asked you to split a hotel room is legit. The groom, not so much. I hope you can find peace and healing. Comment two. I mean, you have your excuse. Hey, so-and-so asked if we'd share a room and was under the impression I was invited, so I just figured I'd reach out to clarify because I had never received an invitation and was under the impression I wasn't. Just put out a feeler. If it is just a bit of confusion, easy enough. If it isn't, your friend's answer is going to be a big clue how you should be approaching this relationship in the future. No need to feel uncomfortable if you don't need to be. And no need to make someone else feel better at your expense if they really don't consider you as good a friend. Now for the update, thanks for sticking around. A lot has happened since my last post. So the wedding happened and I wasn't there. But that's not even the half of it. Turns out, my so-called friend's bride ran off with one of the groomsmen right after the ceremony. The whole town's been buzzing about it. And guess who everyone's been coming to for the inside scoop? Me. Because apparently, I'm the guy who knows everyone's secrets but doesn't get invited to the wedding. I've been trying to keep my head down, but when your family owns the only diner in town, privacy is a luxury you can't afford. My mom's been asking me to help out more since dad passed, and it's been nonstop drama every day. People come in, order their pie, and whisper about the scandal. I just nod and refill their coffee, keeping my thoughts to myself. But then, the groom, my old friend, shows up at the diner. He's looking for sympathy, I guess. He sits at the counter, orders a black coffee, and spills his guts. He tells me he should have invited me that he was wrong and that he was pressured by his in-laws to keep the guest list exclusive. I wanted to be mad, but the guy just had his heart ripped out in front of everyone he knows, so I listened. A week later, the bride's parents' house caught fire. Everyone made it out safe, but the place was gutted. Rumor has it it was arson. The bride's dad had enemies, lots of them, from his days in local politics. The police have been asking around, and my friend, the groom, he's a suspect. Can you believe that? They think he did it out of revenge. I've been talking to the other guys in our gaming group and they're all taking sides. Some think he did it, others are sure he's innocent. It's tearing our group apart. We used to be about games and good times. Now it's all suspicion and secrets. And then last night, the bride shows up at my place. She's crying, saying she made a mistake, that the groomsman was just a fling and she wants to talk to my friend. She's begging me to help her. 
I told her I'd think about it. I didn't know what to do. I mean, after everything, why come to me? I decided to talk to my friend. I told him she was looking for him, that maybe they could work things out. He just stared at me, then he did something I never thought he'd do. He hugged me. He said he was sorry for everything, especially for not inviting me to the wedding. He said he realized who his real friends were when everything came crashing down. So I gave him the address where the bride was staying. I don't know if they'll get back together or what, but at least they're talking. And as for me, I proved I was the bigger person. I helped when I didn't have to, and maybe that's worth more than an invitation. Thanks for reading. My wife keeps buying useless trinkets for our tiny apartment. So I sell them all and teach her a lesson about financial responsibility. Every time she leaves the house, she comes back with some kind of trinket or decorative item and says, it was only $3. We have a small two bedroom apartment and we're very disorganized. The second bedroom is essentially a storage room where we have just thrown all the things we don't use but can't throw away. Every surface of my home is cluttered with some sort of Tupperware, pizza box, or random trinket. I've never discussed this issue with her because she's very sensitive and I just don't want to deal with it. Today, when she left the house to pick up a prescription, I casually told her not to buy anything. She said she might get an energy drink, but nothing else. Then she came home with a glass mushroom and a plastic light-up cloud. Why? I specifically told her not to do this, and she said she wouldn't. I didn't explode or get angry. I just didn't say anything when she showed me her purchases. I think she could tell I was disappointed because she started getting visibly anxious. A few minutes later, I brought up my frustration with her spending habit. She burst into tears and started rushing around the house, saying she would return them. I told her I'm not upset with her. I just want her to stop cluttering the house with things we have no room for. She ended up running off to the bedroom to lie down and slam the door on the way. Ultimately, I think I'm insecure about not being able to afford a bigger place that could accommodate her constant purchases. But the fact is that we don't really have the money for her to spend this frivolously, even if it is only $3. I should add, I love my wife very much. She's an excellent partner in so many other ways. It's just this one thing that's bothering me. Edit. I want to clarify a bit now that I'm in a less emotional state of mind. I feel I have mischaracterized my wife's communication skills with the single anecdote. Yes, my wife is a bit sensitive, but usually this manifests more as anxious hand-wringing than open tears. She has been a bit more emotional than usual lately, partly because her work has been very stressful. She's a mobile mental health crisis worker, and partly because we haven't been able to get her medication due to a national shortage. Even with those things working against her, she's generally a fairly level-headed person, and this afternoon's incident was unusual. We usually communicate fairly well and are both able to take criticism in stride. After we had both calmed down, we had a rational conversation. She has agreed to reduce the various trinkets she's collected, and we'll both be focusing on cleaning up around the house. Having now read several comments, I appreciate the helpful advice that has been provided regarding how to maintain a more orderly household and many of the things people have said that we were already doing. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one, it's not what she is spending it on or the cost of the things, but the amount of things. There needs to be a balance here. If you guys have no room and even your spare room is too full, then yes, she needs to get a handle on it. Is there really no space and very cluttered or how do you see it? because some people can't stand bits and bobs around and they aren't that much. But it seems you guys really need to come together here. If she's sensitive, watch your tone and be kind when speaking, not just talk and then say it with no warning. Explain, I love that this brings you joy. It's not about what you are buying or the cost, but it's about our living space. This is both of our space. We both need to feel comfortable create a few display spaces, anything that is hidden away or not in use for a long time needs a new home. But be gentle here. It's a big adjustment if you have just let it go on and on and never said anything. In the future, talk to her. Comment two, medicine shortage and clutter? This doesn't sound like hoarding. This sounds like ADHD. 
If this is the case, OP, perhaps talk to her about how you can help support her during the shortage. A lot of people are really struggling with not being able to get their meds right now, and it makes it a lot more difficult to keep things organized. She's likely struggling with more than just organizing in the house. I would bet that there's a lot in her head that she's struggling to organize as well. I mean, organizing thoughts. Is she interrupting more than when she's on meds? Changing topics frequently? Fidgeting more? Meds don't magically make everything better, but for many people, the difference they make is amazing. I think a conversation might be in order so that you both can better understand what's going on and how you can both support one another better. Now, for the update. Thanks for sticking around for more of my saga. So, after that whole meltdown over the trinkets, things took a turn for the worse. My wife, she's been acting strange more than usual. She left the house again, said she was going to return the mushroom and cloud, but she came back with a vintage lamp. I couldn't believe it. I was fuming inside, but I kept my cool on the outside. Then, out of nowhere, our landlord shows up for a surprise inspection. He's a stickler for cleanliness and order, and our place was a mess. He started taking pictures, saying he might have to evict us if we don't clean up. My wife was mortified, and I was just standing there, feeling like the world was crumbling around us. She promised the landlord we'd clean up, and after he left, she started throwing things out left and right. But then she found an old photo album buried under a pile of clothes in the second bedroom. It was full of pictures of her with some guy I'd never seen before. She broke down, told me it was her ex, the one who got away because she was too clingy, always buying him little gifts. She said she's been doing the same with me, trying to fill a void. I didn't know what to say. I was hurt, but I also felt sorry for her. We spent the whole night talking, and she promised to get help for her shopping addiction. I thought maybe this was the wake-up call we needed, but the next day, she lost her job. The stress of her work as a crisis worker and her personal issues were too much. She didn't tell me right away, pretended to go to work for a week. I found out when I saw her crying in the park on her way to work. She said she was ashamed and didn't want to disappoint me. I was angry, sure, but uh, more than that, I was scared. How are we going to pay rent? What about her medication? I told her we'd figure it out together, but inside, I was panicking. We started selling some of her trinkets online to make ends meet. It was going okay until one buyer claimed we sold him a fake and demanded his money back. We didn't have it. We'd used it to pay for groceries. He threatened to sue us. It was like one thing after another. Then, my wife's ex showed up. He'd seen her selling stuff online and wanted to check on her. He was all successful and concerned, making me feel even smaller. He offered to lend us money, but I said no. I couldn't stand the thought of being in debt to him. My wife was torn, I could tell. She still had feelings for him, but she also felt loyal to me. In the end, she told him to leave, that we'd sort out our own problems. I was relieved, but also worried. Did she choose me because she loves me or because she felt obligated? Now we're trying to get by, selling what we can, cutting back on everything. My wife is looking for a new job, but it's tough. I keep thinking about her ex, how easy it would have been to take his help but I can't shake the feeling that we need to do this on our own to prove to ourselves that we can. I'm not sure what the future holds for us. I love my wife, but sometimes I wonder if love is enough to get us through this mess. Thanks for reading. If you like this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.